West 2012 nonprofit organization case presentations. For today's nonprofit organization case presentations, our judges are Akhilu Malat, CMA and FCMA, and the Executive Director of Hope International Development Agency, Laura Friedrich, CGA, FCCA, and FCGA, and Direct, or Principal at Friedrich and Friedrich Corporation, Angela Champ, the Vice President of Human Resources at Intact Insurance, Sapna Dayal, CA and Executive Director at Imagine One Day, and Diane Gordon, the Group Manager of Community Relations at Target. Presentations will be a total of 20 minutes, followed by a maximum five minute long question and answer period led by the judges. All teams are reminded they must present for a minimum of 18 minutes in order to avoid a penalty to their score. Any presentation under 15 minutes will receive a further penalty. You'll be warned with the sign at the 15, 18, 19, and 19 and 30 second marks. The final 30 seconds will be silently counted down. The presentation will be stopped at the 20 minute mark. Finally, I'd ask all members of the audience to turn off their cell phones and refrain from using photography or video cameras and try to hold applause until after the question and answer period. And due to the nature of the competition, there'll be no questions or comments from the audience. And you guys can begin when you're ready. In the words of Gandhi, be the change that you wish to see in the world. That's what you've been doing, and that is what we're here today to continue to help you do. Good morning, Akilu and Safna, and thank you so much for providing us with this opportunity to present to you what we feel is a fantastic recommendation that's going to address the dilemma currently being faced by your organizations. As you know, my name is Josie, and I'm joined by my fellow colleagues, Marlo and Steph, and we are Team G Global Consulting. So just to take a quick look at what we will be covering in our presentation, the key issues that we identified currently facing your organizations are the joint venture that you have the opportunity of fulfilling, as well as engaging the young Canadians of Canada. Our recommendation entails creating that partnership, excuse me, also creating a Creatribution 2013 campaign, and then finally, exploring more funding opportunities for both of your organizations. The result of this is going to be lasting impacts through sustainable changes in Ethiopia, as well as higher awareness among young Canadians that you're looking to target. So I will walk you through the situational analysis, and I'll take you through stakeholder analysis and cover the opportunity statement we have come up with today. Marlo will then take you through the decision criteria and our alternatives and Steph will walk you through the recommendation and the implementation plan. So we just want to hone in on the mission statements of your organizations. First of all, Hope International. To improve the supply of basic human necessities for the neediest of the needy in the third world through self-help activities and to challenge, educate, and involve North Americans regarding development issues. So this is something we definitely want to keep in mind moving forward, this in combination with Imagine One Day, your goal and mission, ensuring that all Ethiopians have access to quality education funded free of foreign aid by 2030. And then again, the mission is developing leaders to elevate the world. So again, we really just want to capture these missions and these goals moving forward in any recommendation that we present to you today. So we just wanted to visually show how we feel the alignment crosses over between these two mission statements. And I already touched on what they are, but as you can see, a joint venture would very clearly fit into this, to your missions that you have established already. So just to take a look at the external environment in which you are currently operating, there are some opportunities for you to be aware of. First of all, the high potential of Ethiopia especially in farming initiatives. Also, the influence of up-and-coming Generation Y, so that being the 20 to 35 year olds that you are looking to, looking to target. There are some barriers, however, just to be aware of. Um, risk of shutdown in Ethiopia due to government regulations. So you really need to be conscious of this because obviously that would just ruin your entire operations. And then also just cultural barriers that are associated with international relations. Obviously you are very experienced and this shouldn't be an issue, but it's definitely something to keep in the back of your mind. Then looking internally at your operations, 
both of your organizations have experienced massive success. We are so impressed with what you've been able to accomplish. It's truly amazing. And so you really do have that solid base to work from. Also, a passion and drive that is fueling your organizations to cause change. And we really just want to leverage that. Some shortcomings, we didn't actually notice that many of your organizations are very strong as we noted, however, securing a source of funding that is going to be there in the long term, that's always going to be an issue for not-for-profits, so just something to keep in mind. And we want to run through, um, just go over the stakeholders who are impacted by both of your organizations. We'll go through first with Hope International, really just looking for the opportunity in Ethiopia um, to be capitalized on by developing the skills of the citizens of Ethiopia. Next, imagine one day really looking for advancement of children's education in Ethiopia uh, by engaging Canadians and getting them involved. Ethiopian citizens, access to education is their priority so that they may have a better quality of life. Other Canadian citizens, they just want to see the donations and what they are contributing to your organizations to be effectively used for program initiatives. So we want to keep in mind all of these stakeholders and their various needs moving forward. The primary issues that we identify currently facing your organizations are the joint venture that you have discussed and you're not sure if you want to take that on. Compatibility of organizations is going to be key here, and as we um, displayed with our visual, we do feel that there is that compatibility. And then also just implementing a strategy for such a joint venture moving forward. Also engaging young Canadians. You really want to just get them aware and get them enthusiastic about your cause. And really just, you know, ramp up the hype and get them engaged in what you're trying to do, because it is so great. And Again, that's the 20 to 35 year old base that you're looking to target with that. Some of the secondary issues, um, not as urgent, but definitely issues, are education, edu excuse me, educating the Ethiopians. So that's really what your organizations are about targeting. Um, so you really want to facilitate their independence, so that they are able to provide themselves with a better quality of life through education. And just creating that link between education and the infrastructure that is available to them and just making it more effective overall. And then there's the lack of consistent funding that I touched on briefly previously. Um, donations have in general been declining and that's something that you definitely want to be aware of. And then also diversification of funds. Due to these declining donations, you want to make sure that you're looking elsewhere and that you do have many sources of funds that you can leverage. We just wanted to take a quick look at the financial situations of each of your organizations. Starting first with Hope International, we noticed that donations have dropped 5% um, since 2009 up until 2011. So that is a $1.3 million decrease, and this is very important to note. Um, government funding has tripled, so that's great, but you can't really rely on this, so you do want to look um, to alternate sources. And then your expenses have been fairly consistent, so that's great. Imagine one day, we noticed a drastic decline in your donations. Within one year, it was a 45% drop, so that is huge. And then also, you did have a $180,000 increase in expenses, so an issue there definitely, um, expenses going up and you're not getting the donations you once were getting. So the opportunity statement that we came up for you today was, how can Hope International and Imagine One Day Combine its efforts, combine their efforts to engage young Canadians while providing education opportunities to increase the quality of life for Ethiopians. So with that, I'll pass it off to my colleague Marla, who will take you through our decision criteria and alternatives. Thank you, Josie. All right, so as Josie explained to you, we took a long and in-depth look into what you guys believe in, what you represent, and what your missions are that you're working towards. And over the great months we've had to work with you, we were able to come up with some great alternatives we'd like to examine with you, but first we wanted to show you our positioning map. We thought it was really great for you to understand where both your organizations sit. So we'd like to look at, right now, one focus on infrastructure and one focuses on education more so. And it also, the Hope Foundation is a lot more focused on international, there's a lot more diverse locations, as where we have a bit more Ethiopian focus here as well. 
We believe with your combined efforts together, it would be great for you to sit right in our nice yellow star. This would be a great combination of using the Ethiopian focus while mixing the infrastructure and education goals. After considering that, we came up with four criteria that we believe are the most important to your organizations and that will best create an opportunity for you guys to move forward with. We believe we need to have alignment with both your missions to create something that you believe in and will work hard towards. We also want to have satisfaction of both organizations. If both parties are involved, we need both organizations to be fully satisfied so that everyone is happy and doing really great. We also believe in the benefits for the Ethiopians. This is what we are working toward, it is what you want, and it's highly important that the outcome of this truly benefits them. And finally, we want some feasibility. We just want to make sure that what we recommend is actually implementable at this moment, and we'll be able to move forward with immediately. So with that, we came up with two alternatives. We have our first alternative, all on your own. This would be the option of keeping your organization separate, and finding alternative ways to access that new young Canadian market that you're looking for, and finding your ways to grow your operations. Our second alternative, two is better than one, would be to create a partnership between your two wonderful organizations and creating one amazing chance. Together with this, you would utilize the strengths from both your organizations and create a maximum potential. So with that, we believe all on your own, it's not an option. We think that right now, you're doing great, and we think together though, you would even be better. You have so much potential, you have so many great alignments with your mission, and we think if you work together, this would be a really great chance to work for the organizations and work with the Ethiopians. So, we have four goals that we want to come out of this recommendation for your organization. First of all, we want to maximize the strength for both the parties. Second, we want a more well-rounded program in Ethiopia so we can just offer more to them and create a better quality of life. We also want to create awareness up to that new, young, up-and-coming group of 20 to 35-year-old Canadians. And finally, we want, just as always, for most not-for-profits, to create more funding opportunities just to help with those uh, decreasing fundings that you have seen. And we believe very strongly that if your organization takes these goals on that we recommended, you will be achieving these goals. It will create a lasting impact not only on the lives of Ethiopians, but it will also contribute to the awareness among young Canadians. So with that, our first part of our, part of our recommendation, the joint venture. So we want to create the partnership of Imagine Hope. We believe that a partnership with this would create support in the Ethiopian development. It would allow for the alignment of both your mission and your objectives. This would take a bit of effort, we are very aware of this. You are two separate organizations and you would have to work towards an alignment of what you want out of Imagine Hope and where it would be working towards. It would also involve diversification of expertise. You have expertise in different areas, and together, you could use this knowledge to work towards a stronger base. Finally, we also have extensive experience working in Ethiopia and operating in Canada. We believe this is a great benefit for you guys to use both your skills in these areas and to combine them together. The only risk we do see with this right now is that the effort required to create a partnership can be difficult. It is two companies, you are merging them into one. But we do believe that with proper mitigation and with using a structural plan that we are going to implement and through some other processes we are recommending down the road further here, it will be possible and not a problem at all. So first, the first part of recommendation, you do have two operation bases. You have your park here in Canada and you also have your operations in Ethiopia. So for our Ethiopia, we want to make sure that what you are doing, you are linking your infrastructure and your education. We believe that there is a big link here. If you teach the Ethiopian citizens about how to use the massive farmland and all their potential, this will help increase their infrastructure and together you will be creating a full circle effect. We will also be able to educate about best practices. We will be able to teach them the best ways to use the farmland, to use the opportunities that are available to them and how this can benefit them. And finally, this together would create one more step towards that independence that you would like to achieve for Ethiopia. We also believe that between your two companies, you can maximize your networks. There's pre-existing pre connections in Ethiopia, and with the issues that are currently going on with the government and how they are kicking out a lot of organizations and things are getting tighter and more stringent, we believe both your networks together would be a great benefit for you guys. We also want you to implement a course outline for teachers. You do have the teaching program already in effect, and you do already have outlines that they use. We believe that if you added this to your program, it wouldn't be that much of an additional hassle. It's just one more step towards the education that they need. And finally, the tra training for the teachers would be moved on to the students. We believe the risk here is the Ethiopian government and the current 
issues they are having, but we believe with your, both your networks being used, and as both of you have extensive experience in Ethiopia and operating there, this will not be a problem as long as you continue slowly and always be cautious with your processes. Next, a recommendation for Canada. We want you to work on your operational strategies for the partnership here. It is a big step to move two corporate institutions together for a partnership, and we want you to make sure that you have all the strategies, all the operational processes, all put together. One of the big ones is the accounting and financial procedures for the fundraising that will be involved. We would like you to have a committee created for this, just to monitor it and make sure that everyone is on the same page. This will be done by the Create and Merge Committee from both organizations to oversee the processes. We also want you to create a fundraising committee using the current board members. We do think fundraising is important, especially as we mentioned with the declining funds you have seen in the last few years. And we think a committee who is focused on this and working towards this at all times would be great, really beneficial to you guys. To ensure team cohesion, it is two companies, and you are there could be some resistance here. We want to make sure the teams bond together and both believe in each other. So we recommend a weekend retreat for both organizational staff. We think that you guys should work on clearly communicating the partnership strategic goals so everyone's on the same page and understands what you're working towards and believes in it. We do believe there might be some resistance to change, but we believe between the weekend retreat and the organizational structure that will be slowly implemented and clearly communicated, this will be mitigated. Next, your contribution. We have come up with Imagine Hope. This is the campaign we believe for 2013 will make things work really great for you. We want you to create a campaign to target that market you are looking for. We want you to show us what you think hope looks like in Ethiopia and use the Facebook and Twitter campaigns to do this. We want you to get more shares and more likes. The more person shares it, the more people that like it, the more points people can get. And this is how it will be ranked and there will be a voting process involved. The winners will actually be flown out to Ethiopia with a professional and it will create the vision of the new hope for Ethiopia. You did mention that child poverty images are getting overused and overdone and we want this campaign to be used to create a new image for this and a new way to represent the ideas and beliefs. Finally, there is a funding that we can look for in this. It is a community grant that we believe will help you out and it would be very accessible for this campaign. There is a legal liability but between proper risk and mitigation files, we believe the paperwork would cover this. And with that, I'm going to pass the rest off to Steph to help you cover the rest of our process. Thank you very much, Marlo. All right, just continuing on. So we want to showcase this video to make it um, loud and known to, first of all, Vancouver, and just to kick off this campaign. So we recommend a movie night in Stanley Park. Um, it's a fundraising initiative targeting that 30, 20 to 35 year old range, um, and a viewing party would be in Stanley Park. So tickets will be available for around fifteen dollars, and it will just raise awareness about this campaign. We also recommend that you touch on social media. This is a huge opportunity for you right now. So we recommend that you utilize various platforms and you can recruit a part-time intern to manage this. And this individual does not have to be paid and they would just be responsible for ensuring continuous information is constantly being posted. We also want you to link your social media pages to crowdsurfing platforms. Two um, that we have touched on is called Chimp and Sparked. So Chimp is based out of Vancouver and it is an online platform that will facilitate donations to charity, charity initiatives. So you can create a page for Imagine Hope and people can easily click from um, your Facebook and Twitter page to get on to Chimp and they can donate very simply. It's quite an easy process. Sparked is an online platform that will facilitate idea sharing. This is going to utilize the 70,000 volunteers that it already has. And basically what it is, is it's just a mechan mechanism for brainstorming ideas. And this is just an opportunity for individuals that if they have a few questions and things to ask, that's where they can utilize these 70,000 volunteers. Just ask a question on the page and perhaps some best practices can come out of that. So our implementation plan, just a timeline of how we want this to go. Right away, we want you to create this joint venture called Imagine Hope. And this is where you're going to create your mission and vision statement. Um, we also want you to hire this part-time intern. They're going to be unpaid and apply for some community gaming grants that are necessary um, in order for this to be uh, implemented. You can apply for a $250,000 community gaming grant um, just because of, of, of an non-profit organization. And this individual is going to update and monitor your social media platforms. We also want you to create these operational strategies. Um, creating a joint committee with both organization staff and they're going to be responsible for accounting and financial procedures. Then next year, January to April, um, we recommend a weekend retreat. Whistler would be a wonderful idea for you. This is where to, you can engage some team bonding between both organizations. We want you to implement the contest and the winner will be announced and flown to Ethiopia to create this Imagine Hope um, video. 
Then we want you to create a fundraising committee. This is going to be using current board members and recruiting volunteers, and they can start to um, create this movie night in the park. And you can start to advertise to students in Vancouver. That's a start from your 20 to 35 year old range. And tickets are going to be available for $15, as mentioned. And then, this is where you're going to start to, um, from June to December of next year, you're going to start to send the staff, staff to you. The UPL. This is where you're going to create that course outline for teachers, and they can start to train their students for their best practices. And this is going to facilitate the independence that we want. So we created some performance measurements. First of all, these are efficiency measurements. Administrative, fundraising, and program um, measurements. And we all recommend that these should be around 10%, the lower the better. And also effectiveness. So how effective is this? is this going to be? The number of teachers trained, the number of students exposed, the number of likes and shares on Facebook, the followers on Twitter, um, some board and staff feedback that is obtained, and the community, Canadian community's perception of traffic through social media scanning. These are all things that you can measure on how effective this is actually working. So some risks, we already touched on these, and due to time constraints, we will not go through them again. Again, the alignment of mission statements. We wanted to make sure that we touched on this and made sure that both mission statements were really um, taken into consideration. With that, we're going to recommend a lasting impact for both the organizations. You're going to create sustainable changes in Ethiopia, and there's going to be a higher awareness among young Canadians. We'd like to thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure working with you. And the floor to any questions that you may have. Um, I have a question about the presentation recommendation goals, which come across to you as objectives of this, and I'm really not clear from the presentation what specific goals will come out of this joint venture. So what can we expect to gain in revenue and awareness and in the impact in Ethiopia in a more tangible way? So for us to make a decision, we want to understand that. Of course. So we definitely believe that the goals, as we set out, we believe those are the four steps towards your benefits. We believe the biggest benefit is actually your impact in Ethiopia. This is what you're working towards, and it is what you represent and what you are about. So through your joint venture, you will be creating a better opportunity for Ethiopian citizens through the teaching facilities as well as implementing the infrastructure <coughs> knowledge. We believe you're optimizing both advantages of your organizations. And we believe what you will be turned out of this will be measured through the recommendations of the metrics. And finally, we believe it will increase your funding through the campaign that we are recommending you implement. And it will mostly, we believe the most important right now is increasing awareness about who you are and what you believe. What would your fallback be if you don't receive the $250,000? There's lots of opportunities for government grants. Um, right now, there's also some um, there's a local community grant that you could apply for, which is only $100,000, but that ex that, all that funding is not necessary to send um, this individual away for the contest or anything like that, so that would be extra money for you, but nothing that is um, necessary for implementation right now. So the local one might be a little bit easier to obtain, but we do believe that since you're based out of different areas of BC, that it's going to be very achievable for you to get that to I love the idea of going to Whistler. <laughs> do you think our boards will be, will that be where they would want to spend their money? How do we convince them that that's a good idea to send everybody to Whistler for one month? Absolutely. We feel that being in Vancouver, Whistler is a pride and joy of it. And we feel that it's definitely um, something that would help facilitate team bonding. So, you know, it is an easy sell because if you have good relationships amongst your employees, then you're going to be more um, successful because you're going to work together better and overall be more effective. So we do feel that um, it is something that the board would definitely buy into. I think it's worth that expense. We do, yes. I think that's why they call us small profit to spend money in this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I do appreciate the fact that you have spent quite a bit of time in working with alignment of mission. And uh, it is an issue for a lot of organizations. Uh, not being able to work together. I am, I am interested, however, and other people have asked this question as well. What is the cost of all of this and how is it going to be financed? Like, is $250,000 the cost? Is that, is that what you've determined? The cost of creating this joint venture, the Whistler Retreat, the board meetings, we've got board members from across Canada or North America flying over, um, the marketing campaigns and 
curriculum creation, all that. It's got cost. Have you determined that? Have you got any performance? Uh, yeah, absolutely. So I think that a lot of the costs are, can be covered with those grants that you can apply for. We do believe it's going to only be around $10,000 to send um, those two individuals to Ethiopia to start kick off this campaign. And from there, the donations are going to start to flow in, and that's going to start to cover um, the staff that are going to go down to Ethiopia and start to train the teachers and who therefore will train their students and that kind of thing. So we absolutely believe that this is attainable within the next two years. and. Um, we look forward to seeing it flourish.